If you'll take your scripture passages out of your bulletin and read silently as I read this wonderful passage from Galatians 3, 11 through 14. And the title of the message comes right out of the scripture. He became a curse. He dissolved the curse. This is Paul speaking to the Christians in Galatia. The obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program, and he's talking about the, the many, many different Jewish laws, the impossibility of carrying out so many Jewish laws should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with God that way. The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him or for her. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering in to what God does for you. Habakkuk had it right. The person who believes God is set right by God, and that is real life. Rule-keeping does not natu naturally evolve into living by faith, but only perpetuates itself in more and more rule-keeping, a fact observed in the scripture. The one who does these things, rule-keeping, continues to live by them. Christ redeemed us from that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. Do you remember the scriptures that says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree? That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. And now, because of that, the air is cleaned and we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available for non-Jews too. We are all able to receive God's life, his spirit, in and with us by believing just the way Abraham received it. Paul talks about the impossibility of carrying out the Jewish moral program of 613 different laws. I actually ran this by a, a Jewish friend of mine a few weeks ago. And he said, that's right. There are 613 <laughs> Jewish laws in the Hebrew scriptures that we're supposed to, to follow. And he said, that's why I'm a member of Reformed Judaism. <laughs> because Orthodox Jews, there's three different kinds of Jews. There's Reformed, Conservative, and Orthodox. And Orthodox really seriously believe that you have to keep all 613 laws. Conservatives are a little more, uh, let's not go crazy with these laws, but we need to keep a lot of them. And Reform says, you got the Ten Commandments, all the rest is up to God. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit later about that here in, in the, uh, the, the scripture later on. But Paul does a, he, many of Paul's writings are very, the kind of things that lawyers would write. And when I first read this scripture, I thought, man, that sounds like a legal document. And it really is, because we're dealing with law. 613 laws, and he's saying the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross sets us free and dissolves this curse. And you know, when you have a lot of laws, it's sort of a curse. I was so glad to move out of the state of California 55 years ago. They have a law for everything, and you can't do it. <laughs> Little stuff that you and I can do in, in the Midwest and the rest of the United States, you can't do them in California. And you'll get a ticket or you'll get a fine. Uh, there are more laws than, than I can possibly explain to you in, in California. And, and you know, California always gets this good press and oh, I wish I could go to California. Let me tell you, there are all kinds of strictures and laws about everything. Sometimes I think they want to tax the air I breathed when I was growing up in California. I was so glad to get out of that state. Doesn't that sound crazy? Uh, part of it was the legal system. I was just really fed up with, with what I consider unnecessary laws. And I know there's other countries in the world that are like that too. And by the way, California is like the 12th largest country in the world if it wasn't part of the United States, and they, they're sort of like Texas. 
they really think that they should be their own state and their own state should be their own country. And uh, that's why Texans and Californians, if you're from Texas, don't be offended, you know. But they're just a little strange. They have a little bit different, it's not, it's not their, it's their mental attitude is, is they really think they're an independent sovereign state. And so this is a legal document. There are 613 laws that Paul is talking about throughout this whole scripture. And he says, laws don't make for a good relationship. Now, you have to have a few rules in the house when you're raising kids. But if you start laying down rules for your husband, if you start laying down rules for your wife, and I can tell that it, both things have happened just by looking at you today, uh, that doesn't sustain a good relationship. Uh, I've been letting the grass grow out underneath our apple trees because my mower can't get there. I have to put wire cages around our apple trees because every uh, fall, the young bucks will sharpen their horns on those apple trees, and I've, they've killed two or three of my apple trees. But because I have these wire meshes around my apple trees, grass grows up there, and I, my mower can't get to it. And so one of the rules in our house is everything has to be perfect outside. I don't subscribe to that rule, but it reaches a certain point when the grass gets about a foot high, then I'll, I'll get out and, and follow that rule. Uh, somebody asked me why my hand was all cut up. It's because lifting those wire cages without disconnecting them from the trees and cutting grass underneath. But, but I respect that we need to, to follow that rule that Kathleen has uh, so that it looks nice, you know. Being a man, I really don't care. <laughs> but it, I got to admit that it looks better. Uh, and I lost a lot of weight doing that yesterday. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't that hot, but it was pretty hot. And, and sometimes you've just got to say to your wife, yes, ma'am, right away, ma'am. <laughs> and she, so she, yesterday morning, I got up and she says, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to go out and take care of your apple trees because <laughs> you'll feel better. <laughs> and she did. She felt a lot better. Then she had, of course, she had several other projects she wanted me to do, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> I, I did one of the 613 rules, <laughs> and I'm going to take a break, you know. And I had to take a bath after doing that because uh, uh, you get pretty sweaty when you're outside working this time of year in Kansas. But if we just follow laws, we don't have a relationship with God. We've got to follow love. We got to do what God tells us to do. I love Kathleen, so I'm going to do most of the time <laughs> what she tells me to do because I love her and I, I don't like to see her upset. Now, some things, you know the drill. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> but that's how you get a relationship with God is the same way you get a relationship with other people. You love God, so you automatically want to do what God guides us to do, and, oh, by the way, when, when you and I do what God uh, tells us to do, we have peace with ourselves. Uh, the rules that Jesus laid out, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor, yourself, are really good rules. And when you do that, Jesus took 613 laws and jammed them into those Two key things. And even the Jews of his day, there was a scribe and uh, the Pharisees that listened to this. And they said, you know, Master, you're right. Everything in the law and the prophets is summed up in these two rules. Love God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And help your neighbor. Because you love yourself and you help yourself. So help your neighbor when your neighbor needs help. Uh, it, it's important to remember, you first love yourself. Then out of that energy, then you love your neighbor. You, you don't totally deplete yourself because your neighbor is, is, uh, has a lot of needs. So loving God takes care of all these rules and regulations. Now, there was a lot of Jews in those days that became believers. And they loved their Jewish faith. And they loved their, their 613 different laws. 
And there's a saying in mental health, structure binds anxiety, and the more anxious you are, the more structure you need. This is why there's a lot of our friends and family members, they have a lot of really rigid patterns and, and little laws for themselves that they do, little habits, you know, they make you feel safe if you're anxious. And so I think, I think that's really important to realize that. I, I do some things, and you do some things. We have little rituals. We don't call them rituals, but look at some of the stuff you do every day. You have the little ritual. One of the things I got to do is get up, take my medicine, and brush my teeth. And that sounds crazy, but it, it, it binds your, your anxiety just doing that. And, and then I do other things. Making your bed is a ritual I'd encourage you to do. Uh, cleaning up your room. When you do these rituals, they make you feel safe. And they lower your anxiety. And, and that's why over the years and the centuries, thousands of years of, of Jewish law, it came up to 613 laws. And Paul is saying we need a relationship with God, not a legal list of things to do. Now, one of the things we do, because we love God, we come to church. Those of you listening on YouTube, because you love God, you want to consider God's word and be closer to Jesus. We don't do that out of, it's one of the laws I got to do. We do it out of love for God. That's really the secret. And so... It says that the person who lives in a right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him or for her. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. In other words, those, those commandments. And, and Paul is talking about salvation. You and I have to remind ourselves, just like our elder was sharing us with us today, we have to remind ourselves about Jesus every day. And we have to remind ourselves that we're followers of Jesus every day. And then we will remember that we're born again and we have salvation, and our lives will be changed every day when we do that. And then he quotes Habakkuk, the person who believes God is set right by God and that's the real life. Believing and loving God and asking God to guide you every day, that's real living. That is full, real living. And rule keeping does not naturally evolve into living by faith. That's a direct quote from Paul. But only rule keeping only perpetuates itself in more and more rule keeping it's impossible to keep all the rules. Now, part of the early struggle of the early Christians was kosher food. I don't know about you, but I love kosher beef hot dogs. Uh, and I love some, some kosher food that's Jewish food that's specifically done in all these laws about butchering cattle and, and you can't eat pork and all kinds of stuff. Try kosher food sometime. But all the Jews were eating back in those days was just totally kosher food. And this was tremendous struggle for early Christians. Peter and Paul are telling us we can eat anything. Nothing is unclean anymore. We can eat pork. Uh, the only kind of fish they could eat was fish with scales so we can eat catfish and shrimp and all kinds of other stuff octopus that we couldn't eat before. this was this was really hard cultural shift for those early Jews and since we're not Jews we don't really understand uh, this kosher food was really a struggle for them to to, to change their diets uh, one of the interesting things and I, I teach world history is during the Middle Ages, when they had the Black Death, from 1300 to 1350, waves of Black Death rolled through Europe. 
A third of the people in the countryside died, and a half of the people in the cities died. But the, none of the Jews died. They weren't eating a lot of pork. They weren't eating a lot of empty pork fat. They were eating nutritious, healthy, kosher food, and they lived. And it made the rest of Europe really angry. And they said, well, this whole black death must be because of the Jews. And one of the, one of the reasons the Jews began to be persecuted in Europe is because they were eating a healthy diet of kosher food. And they didn't get sick. They, when the illness came, their bodies were strong enough with, with healthy food and not empty calories. And I love pork and greasy food. Greasy pork food, just like everybody. But that's all that Europe was living on, everything. You heard the phrase, he, he can bring home the bacon? That comes from the Middle Ages of Europe when people that really worked hard, they could a side of bacon and they could hang it there and they could cook all their food in that bacon grease. And uh, everybody was eating grease, grease, grease and a lot of empty calories. They weren't eating nutritional food and the Jews didn't get sick. And, and so the, they began to persecute the Jews. So kosher food was really a big deal in the early church. And what was even a bigger deal is, if you were Jewish, you couldn't eat meals with Gentiles. You couldn't have friends that were non-Jews. You could only hang out with Jewish people. That was even bigger than the kosher food. And you're saying that because we're followers of Jesus now, we can hang out with Greeks and Romans and Egyptians? Are you kidding me? We have never hung out with Greeks and Romans and Egyptians. And who wants to hang out with Romans anyway? The Roman army just constantly controls and taxes us. And, and there was real turmoil among the, the Jewish followers of, of Jesus after Jesus rose from the dead. And they didn't want to change their food. And they didn't want Greek Christians to be in their worship services, and, and Egyptian Christians, and Libyan Christians, Roman Christians, they didn't want it, and yet they realized what Peter and Paul, those are the two main apostles that talked about this, were teaching them. And Paul said, Christ redeemed us from all that self-defeating, cursed life. Those 613 rules are a curse. And so Jesus absorbed it completely into himself on the cross. Do you remember the scripture that says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree? This is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. This is where the title of our message comes today. Jesus and God are the source of all that is good. And so through Jesus, God dissolved the curse in our lives. When you have a blood clot, one of the first things the doctors try to do is dissolve that blood clot. And the law is sort of like a blood clot. It keeps the circulation of the Holy Spirit from moving out of love in our hearts. And we just follow these, this rule and that rule and this rule and that rule. Uh, my grandson is Seventh-day Adventist, and he said, Grandpa, how come you don't follow the Bible and worship on the Sabbath? How come you worship on Sunday? And I said, well, Devin, the reason we don't is because we didn't want to, early Christians didn't want to be confused confused with Jews, and since Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, he was buried on Friday, and in the grave Friday night, Saturday night, and rose on Sunday, Christians want to be distinct from Jews, and so the first day of the week, Sunday, is the day they made their holy day. And you could tell as a Seventh-day Adventist, nobody had ever told Devin. It was a new, a new concept for him. And Devin, like I talked about earlier, he's a follower of Jesus, he gave a tremendous testimony to me before he left for Northern Illinois State University. But he, he was still following the Jewish law, the Sabbath law. But hundreds of years later, Seventh-day Adventists said, well, let's go back to the Sabbath 
being Saturday. But that's okay. They're followers of Jesus just like we are as well. So many times Christians have wanted to add different laws and different denominations. There's some denominations that have some really strict laws. There's some, I went to one church and they wouldn't give me communion because I wasn't a member of that faith. And it wasn't Catholic. It was another church, a Protestant church. That's a pretty strict law. I'm not sure that's in the Bible. <laughs> I think everybody that follows Jesus Christ. Uh, and it hurt my feelings, you know, as a Christian. I went to a special effort to go to that special service. The pastor invited me, and then the church that the pastor invited me to wouldn't give me communion. There's a lot of other denominations that have a lot of other laws. The key thing is, are you a follower of Jesus? The key thing is, do you believe that Jesus dissolved the curse? Just like anticoagulants dissolve the blood clots, Jesus dissolved all these laws, all these Jewish laws, and you and I are set free. And now, because of Jesus dissolving the curse, Paul goes on to say, the air is cleared, and we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available for non-Jews too. I was driving north from Topeka the other day, and I thought, man, it is hazy today. And I, I remember thinking, this is more than summer haze. This, it's really hazy. And then when I got home, I saw the news. There's all these wildfires burning in the southwestern United States. And, you know, I fought forest fires. You'd think I'd recognize smoke, but it, it, we were so far away from the forest fires, I couldn't smell the ashes. But it was the same haze that forest fires bring. You know, when we have a lot of rules and regulations in our lives that hinder us from following Jesus out of love, we're living in a haze. We can't see clearly. And uh, I think I told you this. Uh, I had 2015 vision when I was fighting forest fires, and I flew in a helicopter, helicopter attack crew. And a pilot, we had a crazy pilot. He loved to fly down through valleys. He didn't have to. He just liked to buzz valleys, you know. But with 2015 vision, I could see the power lines across the valleys before he could see them, you know. So in that particular helicopter, I was on one side and the other firefighter was on the other and the pilot was in the middle. I was constantly hitting him and pointing out power lines, you know. I had a vested interest in not hitting power lines. <laughs> and, and, you know, being in a hazy environment, you know, where things are sort of blurred, Jesus clears away that smoke, Paul is saying. You can see clearly how much God loves you. You don't need a whole bunch of rules and regulations. I'm not throwing away the Ten Commandments, and Jesus didn't either. But love is the reason to follow God. Forgiveness and love is the reason to follow God. So this blessing is available to non-Jews. We are all able to receive God's life, God's spirit, just the way Abraham received it. And you know, I was reading and studying this passage, and I came across Psalm 135, 1 to 3, and the basic teaching of that psalm is, shout hallelujah, God is good. Shout hallelujah, God is good. And we can see that through Jesus. He became the curse. He hung on a tree, an ancient, ancient Middle Eastern proverb is cursed everyone who hangs on a tree. And then he dissolved the curse. He dissolved the curse of the law. All these crazy nitinoid laws. We're free to follow Jesus. We're free to love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And then we can say with the psalmist, Shout hallelujah, because God is so good.